Uh, but yeah, so uh, Epstein would invite me over to uh, the island, and that's where I met my girlfriend 10 years ago, and we're about to celebrate our 18th birthday. Oh shit, we're on, we're on. Uh, I'd like to welcome back to the podcast uh, one of the more popular guests I ever had before, one of the funniest fuckers ever, uh, the legendary Jackie Martin. Jackie, how are you doing today? I am doing good, Adam, but you're going to have to uh, understand that I, I don't understand a word you're saying, so I'm just going to be faking it. Okay. <laughs> okay, there you go. a very funny bloke from the other side of the pond. But congratulations <laughs> on being number two in the world and number three on your block or whatever that <laughs> crap you told me. Congratulations, though. Number 69, bro. <laughs> ah, that tastes good. That tastes good. <laughs> Usually, not always. <laughs> those, those are the ones, yeah, yeah. You don't uh, call back in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Can I start off by telling you a joke that I heard recently? You tell me one, and then I'll tell you the most disgusting one I ever heard. <laughs> so uh, this guy goes into a toy shop, and he sees a Native American Indian. Have you heard this one? I, I, you just started 12 different <laughs> jokes. Go ahead. <laughs> and uh, uh, he sees him looking at uh, this doll, and he says, excuse me, sir, uh, who, who's this doll for? And the, and the Indian says, oh, this is for my daughter. She's called Bright Shining Star. And the, and the white man goes, well, that's a great name. Uh, do you have any other children? Or, oh, fuck, wait. And he said, uh, the white man. Yeah, said, I, I, I have my other children, uh, Broken Rubber and Two Dogs Fucking. Of course yeah. I know that joke. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, listen to this one. You ready? I hope you can understand English. <laughs> so a grandfather is with his grandson. And they're sightseeing. And grandfather says, Sonny boy, you see that field over there? That's where they fought the Battle of Gettysburg in 1863. And you know, Sonny boy, a lot of people say that that was the turning point of the Civil War. And the kid says, duh, grandpa. Tell me something I don't know. His grandfather says, I can fit my whole fist in your grandmother's asshole. <laughs> I love Christmas jokes. <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> but that, knowing the way uh, my grandmother's arse is these days, you probably could fit a fist on a foot. What? That doesn't matter. Being a pervert. No, I, I, I wish, I wish I, I just, you got to go slow because I really, I'm not being rude. I just really can't understand you that well. Tell me what you said. Your grandmother. I said uh, at her age, we could fit uh, a fist on the foot up her arse. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I couldn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, the recent sort of news in the comedy world, of course, was uh, the legendary Dave Chappelle, uh, who's a black man. Uh, is that a problem for you? No, not too bad. Uh, okay, because uh, I was worried in case you were going to say it was. I've no, I've known him uh, for a long, long, long time. I knew him before he was Dave Chappelle. I knew him when he was Dave Chappelle, and not, he was actually in the green room at the Just for Laughs uh, Nasty Show in 1993, and we were all fooling around just before I went on. Really, I mean, he was still funny, but he wasn't as huge as he got. Yeah, you know, a lot of these guys are so nice. You know, some there's guys that are idiots. The guys that are idiots were idiots when they were younger, too. You know, it's just, just like people. You know, people are coming all shapes, sizes, and variations. Same with comics. And how famous or not famous they are really has nothing to do with anything. Hey, you know what I forgot to do? The book. Buy my book. You know, you know, I was on the Howard Stern show for years, right? Oh, yeah. So I've been off the show for almost 20 years. And he has never really acknowledged anything about me. And I put out my autobiography. That's the order, my autobiography, The Joke Man, Bowder Stern. But of course, he never mentioned on the air, ever. He inadvertently helped me sell so many books because he recently put out a book about six months ago. And have you ever bought a book on Amazon? Yeah, yeah. And if you buy a book on Amazon, right underneath it says, people who bought this book Many of them also bought this book. So there's my book in big, bold picture. And none of his fans, none of his listeners knew, even knew I had a book out. So all of a sudden, there's my book. 
they already have their credit card out. They're holding the mouse. Well, one click and bing, they get my book too. And all of a sudden I got this huge spike in sales that I couldn't figure out why. And it's because it's right. I mean, he didn't mean to help me, but he helped me without knowing it. <laughs> so I'm telling your listeners and your viewers, what do you call them? Do you call them your viewers? Uh, listeners. Your listeners. Listen, buy my book. I promise, number one, you'll love it. And I finally am in the black. I got past the all the, you know, like when you make a record or write a book or something, the company keeps all the money and keeps all the advances and all the price of making it and everything. And it's a long time before you get in the black. Well, I'm officially in the black. So anybody who buys a book, I make a few dollars. So God damn it, buy a book. <laughs> well, Shalova. how are you? Well, speaking of the black, uh, with, with Dave Chappelle, uh, oh. There's recently been kind of a backlash against him because he did a new special where he dared to make fun of uh, social justice warriors. And now, of course, the social justice warriors have become offended by this. So what's your oh, take? Oh, no. You know what? Somebody told me that they were watching. My new, my new good friend, Andy Goodwin, said, uh, I was watching a new Dave Chappelle show, the Dave Chappelle uh a program or whatever, a special on, I guess, Netflix. And he said it was so funny and so great. And my girlfriend wanted me to turn it off because she got turned off. And he said, you know, people got to take a chill pill. Number one, he's so funny and he's allowed, he's entitled to his opinion. God, he's been through the ringer. He's been through it all. So anybody, you know, fuck him. That's all. Just fuck him. And so funny because I'm so disgusting. And my buddy says it's so funny because my girlfriend has no problem with you, you know. That's because I hit everybody. You know, I make fun of the midgets and the blacks and the Polish people. And then I make fun of myself and my girlfriend. So, you know, it's such a moving target. But I don't know. I, I, now I got to watch it. I didn't, did he really lay into him? What, what do you mean? Like the, uh, the, the people that are screaming for equal opportunity and all that stuff, which, of course, they should have, you know. No, well, basically, the, the bit is, is that... Uh... He said he was doing an impression of this dumb voice, and uh, a lot of people thought initially it was Trump. And and he goes, he goes, he goes, no, I'm talking about you. Listen, the Trumpettes are, you know, the Trump people are up in arms more and more and more because Trump keeps digging holes bigger and bigger for himself and throwing more dirt on himself and making such an asshole of himself. And it's so hard for people. I can't believe people still support him and, and the senators and how, you know, members of the House are still behind him. You know, behind doors, they're like, how the hell how are we going to get rid of this guy? And people still defend him to the death. So, you know, there's people, if you even fool around. <clears throat> when I put a Trump joke on Twitter, I, that's another commercial. I tweet jokes every day at 4.20 p.m. International Marijuana Time at Jackie Martling, J-A-C-K-I-E-M-A-R-T-L-I-N-G. If I put a Trump or a Donald Jr. joke or an Ivanka joke on there, you wouldn't, but people go nuts. You'd think I'd say your mother has crabs, you know, and they're, and they're just idiots. They're just, you know, I mean, he's such a moron. God, I, I, I worry about what you people over there and in Europe and all, all over the world. I wonder, what is the fact that you people think that this guy represents us, it just makes makes my blood curdle. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. But I think it's because he's so handsome that he gets away with it all. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I, I, a girl would have to be mad at her pussy to fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I got to ask you about uh, the Jerry Seinfeld TV show, uh, Comedians in cars getting coffee. Uh, you, want, you want to hear a funny story? Yes. Um, you know, I've known Jerry for like 40 years and I've known all those guys. You know, they, they might, there's a documentary coming out on me in a couple months called Joke Man. And the guy making it says that I'm the Forrest Gump of comedy because I've stood next to everybody as they zoom past me and got famous. And I knew all these guys, and a million years ago, I hosted a show in 1979 at a disco in Fort Lee, New Jersey. And the guy gave me the list to introduce the acts. And what really sucks is my name isn't on the list, but I was the MC, you know, the host, the master of ceremonies. And he gave me this little scrap of paper 
with the names of the people that were going to go on that night. And on the web, like 20 years ago, I put I put stories on the web on my website. And this piece of paper was on there because it accompanied stories about the old days and the old shows we did. And somebody must have come across this piece of paper because it was just a JPEG floating around the Internet. So they located me and said, can we use that piece of paper, you know, the image of it? And I said, make me an offer. And they said, OK. And they, they wanted to use it for comedians in cars getting coffee. And the reason they wanted to use it was because Eddie Murphy was on with Jerry Seinfeld. And they were both on this list. So I said, OK, make me an offer. So the producer writes back to me, $600. <laughs> this is so funny, Adam, because I'm such an asshole. I wrote back to the producer. I said, OK, let's review. A billionaire comedian wants to interview another billionaire comedian on a billion dollar network, and they want full rights in perpetuity in any media that may ever be invented <clears throat> for all time for a priceless piece of comedy memorabilia. And you would like the worldwide rights in perpetuity for $600. I said, <laughs> what would you say? And the guy wrote back. I guess I would have said what you just said. He said, I'll get back to you. So he gets back to me. He says, the most we can pay is $1,000. And I was going to email back and say, you know what? Why don't you tell Jerry that I, I just saved him $1,000 by saying, fuck you. But I didn't. I said, OK. So the most, one of the most recent, I mean, it might have been the first new one this year, was Comedian in Cars Getting Coffee, Jerry Seinfeld with Eddie Murphy. And at, I haven't watched it, but at some point, they're talking about the old days and they flash to this piece of paper. And what's so priceless about it is it has mm. Eddie Murphy, Jerry Seinfeld and Gilbert Gottfried are all on the list. And all three of them are spelled wrong, which is probably why I kept it, because it's so funny. But I said, you know, listen, if you only give me a thousand, the least you can do is give me a credit. So at the end of the show, I have a credit on Comedian in Cars. You wouldn't believe. The Twitter, people going nuts trying to figure out why the fuck is, did Jackie get a credit on that show? Because my name is not on that list. I just owned it because I was the MC, but it just said MC. And they're saying, well, he probably, there was probably a picture of him in the background or, or he had a picture of Murphy with a dog or, you, you know, whatever. There are people going nuts and they still don't know. I think I'm going to finally put it on Twitter and say, look, you morons, that was my piece of paper, you know. You know, I, I you know what, I'll, uh, I'll email you the, the JPEG of it because it's funny. You know, it's got Seinfeld, S-I-N-E and Eddie, E-D-D-Y. It's funny. I, I didn't mean to be so long winded. But uh, what now you you asking me because you like the show, you don't like the show. No, it's just that um, I've been uh, binge watching it recently. And it, it's amazing to me how unfunny some comedians are on that show. Adam, Adam. Most comedians aren't funny. You know, it's like, it's just like if you're Mickey Mantle, you don't walk around during the day swinging a bat. You know what I mean? It's, it's a craft. It's an art. Very few really funny people wind up being comics. It's, it sounds weird. It sounds really weird. But, you know, it's, it's a learned thing. And it's a lot of hard work. And it's crazy. Like most of these guys hanging out with them. I've always been the life of the party. I'm just not a good comedian. You know, I'm a joke teller. I'm a, I'm a guy who's great at a party and great at a bar. And it translates somewhat on stage, but it never was going to get me anywhere, you know. But, uh, you know, some guys are funnier than others. But the, the very common thing is, oh, you know, Harry? Yeah, well, he got a great act. You know, Charlie? Yeah, he's funny off stage. You know, it's like it's two different things. It's like, yeah, he's a lot of fun, but I wouldn't want him to date my sister. One of those things, you know what I mean? <laughs> But uh, if you have friends, the, 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 your best friends are the last people you would want dating your sister. You know what I'm saying? Especially because I'm friends with a lot of black people. <laughs> but, you know, you're an asshole. But <laughs> it is funny that they go on the show with them. I mean, if you're not that funny, why would you go on and let the world know? You know? Of course, I'm sure some of them think they're just funny by the nature of talking. You know, I, I do so many radio shows, you know, promoting my shows. And. I'm great on the radio because I go on the radio and I tell jokes, tell jokes, tell jokes, fool around, tell stories. 
most comedians aren't naturally funny. And they go on these radio shows and the, and the guy will say, well, what do you want to talk about? And they say, well, you just talk and I'll be funny. And th these radio DJs, they say, Jackie, we love it when you come on because you take the ball and run with it. And you're funny. These other guys just sit there like bumps on a log and they think everything they have to say is interesting. And it fucking well ain't. You know, I know it sounds like I'm bragging, but if you know what you're doing, you know what you're doing, you know. The world knows I never got that big, so I'm not pretending I'm ever going to get that big, but I do know I'm funny, I'll tell you that. But uh, recently with, with Eddie Murphy, it was announced that he's coming back to do a Netflix stand-up special. He, I, no, I didn't hear that. Is that true? It, he is, and they're paying him the tiny amount of $70 million. And you know what? I'll tell you right now what's going to happen. I, I, between me and you, <clears throat> they're going to give him half the money. He's going to do the show. He's going to say, you know what? That's really, really not funny enough. And it's never going to see the light of day. I, I, I will be the first one to admit if I'm wrong. And I like the guy. He's a nice guy. But <clears throat> I bet you anything that happens. <clears throat> do you you think know, he... I don't know if you know, I, I, was a, I tried to be a songwriter. And uh, my heart was so in it for about 10 years. And I just sucked. You know, I loved it and put so much work into it. But, but I wasn't any good. But when I started in comedy, I used to play songs at the end of my show. <clears throat> and when we first started out, we had a whole gang and we'd do shows like three, four, five of us. We'd go to different places and do shows. And I always went on last because I was so dirty and so loud. <clears throat> and I used to always end my show with one of my songs. And one night after a show, <clears throat> word for word, Eddie Murphy came up to me and said, Jack, you know, I got like five favorite songs. And three of them are yours. <laughs> I swear to God. And like, I'm like, where is he now? Come on, Eddie. Put one of my songs in a movie. I'd be, you know, I'd, and I'd go to the moon, you know. He's got, you know, if you had a favorite song, if it was 50 years ago, if it comes on the radio, you recognize it because it puts you back in that place in time. Even if you didn't like the song, you remember. So I know he knows that. I know he remembers that. You know, I should have made that one of the things. Listen, I'll take you a thousand dollars, but just ask Jerry if he remembers uh, to ask Eddie if he remembers Jackie's songs. But I didn't do it. You know, I'm an idiot. So what can I tell you? Do you do you think he has a chance of meeting expectations? <clears throat> you know what? There's every chance he'll knock it out of the ballpark and it'll be the funniest thing there ever was. But there's just as good a chance he won't. You know what I mean? It's sometimes it just doesn't translate you know i i have no idea because it's not like he's been doing comedy all along i don't know if you he went on the saturday night live 25th or 50th anniversary whatever it was and he wouldn't say two words and they were begging him to be funny and he just wouldn't you know but listen he's got all the cards he can do whatever he wants whatever he wants you know well speaking of other very powerful black men uh, I'd love to ask you a question about Beetlejuice. I don't know. The only thing I know about him was I left long before they really, really exploited him, but they were already exploiting him. And I was, I swear to you to God, I swear to God, every time that, that guy walked into the studio, <laughs> it was like the first time he walked in because I just couldn't believe what he looked at, look, what he looked like and acted like. It wasn't like, oh, him again. It was like, holy gee, what, you know, you know, there is no God if he created him, you know, and, uh, and it was so, it was just so crazy. And then guys are taking turns managing him and do, you know, throwing him across the room and, you know, but I was long gone before they really went to work on him. But, but what, did you have a specific question or just like, what was your impression of him? Yeah. Uh, have you ever seen his sex tip? His what? Sax tip? His dick? No. <laughs> uh, seen... There's a there's uh, a tip of him having sex. No, oh. <clears throat> no, no, I no, I haven't. I have enough trouble watching Kim Kardashian blow somebody. I don't need to see. <laughs> I need to, you know. It's... I think the last sex tape I watched was when uh, Pamela Anderson was in the front pay, front seat with with Tommy. And I'm like, what is that thing? And all of a sudden I realized it was his dick. And I was like, holy Jesus, look at that. Oh my God, it's the hugest thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, wow, if I'm not impressed with it, maybe I'm gay, you know. 
Uh, well, Beetlejuice ho- has a sex tape. You know, the world really needs to end. Maybe we owe it to Trump. Thanks. We should we should thank Trump for ending the world. <laughs> hey, buy my book. <laughs> there's nothing about Beetlejuice in this, but there's a lot about comedy and the Stern show and behind the scenes. And if you like me and if you like Stern and if you like uh, autobiographies and if you like to laugh, I promise you, you will love this book. Go to Jackie the Joke Man. Dot com. That's one word, JackieTheJokeMan.com, and the Amazon page comes up, and you can buy it. You can buy it in audio. You can buy it on digital, and people love it. So get one. What you do is you buy one, you read it, and then you give it to your brother for Christmas. Simple. Or Hanukkah, or whatever you celebrate, whatever. Let's be politically correct. You Jews, you buy one, too. <laughs> we need to celebrate happy hour over here. What do you do? We celebrate happy hour. Happy hour. <laughs> Where's an Irishman go on vacation? I don't know. To a different bar. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what? Well, one last note on the. the oh, baby. you want to hear a really off color joke? Yes. As far as you're concerned. <laughs> what would you call a guy taking a shit during the potato famine? <laughs> I don't know. A show off. <laughs> <laughs> I hope people don't get mad at me. Hey, Adam, I'm being absolutely serious. I want to come to Ireland and do a show. I got a couple of comedian friends that travel around on the boats, and they said the Irish people would go berserk for my act, that they would love my dirty jokes. I want to come over there, please. Or tell me at least, tell me a hotel where if me and my girlfriend flew over to Belfast, where we should stay and where we could look. You gotta help me. I don't want anything from you except information. Well, I would say go to uh, Dublin would be the better place. Okay, fly uh, to Dublin, and then stay at the uh, the Clarence Hotel. The Carriage Hotel. Yeah, it's owned by Bono. By who? B- Bono. Oh, really? Now listen. Do, do you have any viewers or listeners in Dublin? I uh, hope so. Listen. I love, I, I'm on with Adam because I, I got so tickled to, to be in communication with somebody from Ireland. I've done a few shows on, uh, not on real and Skype, but usually on telephone from England and from Germany. I love it. I love doing international. I love when people like my jokes internationally. It's so much fun. <clears throat> I would love to hear from anybody. So please email me, jokeland at AOL.com. This is not a commercial. This is personal. J-O-K-E-L-A-N-D. Jokeland at AOL.com. I answer all email. Please tell me you got a a place for me to work, a place for me to stay. If you're a pretty girl, email me. If you're a pig, email me. I don't care. Email me your sister's number. I don't care, but I would love to be in communication. Send me an email. We can goof on Adam. And then the next time I talk to him on the phone, we can really fuck with him good. All right? (laughs) If you email me, I'll send you a JPEG of the piece of paper that was on the Seinfeld show. It's a collector's item. It's beautiful. Hey, you know what? Well, you keep talking. I'm going to find this thing. Okay. Well, for those uh, after they've ordered Jackie's book, they should go online to find... uh... Beetlejuice's sex tape because he's having sex with a crackhead and another dwarf. Can you see that? I, uh, that's brilliant, Dad. Can you see it? It says Eddie Murphy, Jerry Seinfeld, Gilbert Gottfried. Gottfried, whatever it is. That's it is. Br- it's just that, that's Jerry- from the Seinfeld show. And it says Jerry Seinfeld, recent TV pilot. It was Jerry Seinfeld, uh, Comedians in Cars, getting coffee with Eddie Murphy. Uh, i got to ask you a, a, a question about Artie Lang. Uh, obviously, Artie's going through some really rough shit at the minute. So um, what do you he's think such, about Artie? He's such a good guy. He wrote, he wrote the forward. You just led me into a commercial. He wrote the forward to my book, and he also recorded the forward. For the audio book. So I not only have him doing the forward of my book, but he did the forward for the audio version. He's such a nice guy. He was a fan of the Stern Show for so long. He said one day he came home and his father said, Artie, I just was listening to the funniest radio show I've heard in my life. And you're going to love this guy, Jackie Martling. He's out of his mind. 
and Artie became an instant fan. And then him and his friends used to come and see my show in New Jersey. And then he wound up on the show. And <clears throat> people say, oh, that's great. You guys get along. We were always friends. He came on the show nine months after I left. They had tried four or five or six different people. There was no crossover with me and him. We're friends. We've always been friends. He's been through, you know, he, he's trying so hard. I did his podcast a bunch of times. And he's just so good and just so funny. And he really wanted to do us to do shows together. But then he would wind up in rehab. Wind up, blah, blah. And that, the last time, he was in really in rough shape. I think he owed them some money to some bad people. I think he got beat up and they gave him heroin with cut glass in it. And that's why his nose got all screwed up. Mm. But he, now he's in long-term rehab and knock on wood, I hope he's doing great. I, you know, I don't know who to ask and who not to ask, but uh, he has my full, my, my love and my support and everybody's, the whole world's been rooting for him for 10 or 20 years, but he, you know, that's why they call it dope, man. You know, it's got yeah. its hooks in him, and I, I just hope he pulls out of it, you know. What was your take on the... uh it's crazy. Uh, You're a good man. But uh, I got to ask, what was your take on the uh, Artie versus Stutter and John feud? I didn't pay attention to that, you know. They, you know what <clears throat> Stutter and John just tries to start trouble with people because that's... <clears throat> that's his that's what he thinks is funny is controversy so he bring you know he's try, he's been trying to bait me for months now because i won't do his podcast because there's nothing in it for me he just wants to bad mouth howard and i don't, don't want to and and he's just mad at me in fact i don't even want to talk about it but i don't think there was any substance because one minute uh, john and Artie were fine and the next minute they weren't so i i, I have no idea I, I and that's the truth i honestly have no idea i I'm out of the, you know, I don't know anything about Howard or his marriage or the people that are on the show and people ask me and they think I'm be holding my, you know, my, my notes close to my chest, but I'm not, I don't know. I don't care. You know, it, it's, that's not my world. You know, uh, I got to ask you about it as well. Norm MacDonald, uh, he, to me, I think he's one of the funniest people alive and, uh, but he seems to go into hiding a lot. He, you know. He, I think he does a lot of stuff. I think he likes to gamble. I think he likes sports. And I don't think, you know, I think he does as much comedy. <clears throat> he's he's in a comfortable enough position. I I think, I don't know him. I know him a little bit, but not very well. I think he's in a position where he can do as much or as little of anything as he wants. You know, I know he used to go on Letterman and, and he'd tell a really long joke. And, and very often there were some of the same jokes I told. And I would love to hear his version. And I know he loved my versions, you know, like I, I loved when he came on the show. He was always so nice, so friendly. Uh, the first time I had seen Artie in a million years was when he came on the show at Norm because he was on Norm's show. But he's a he's a really nice, really, really. He's a genuinely funny guy. Now, that's a guy that's really funny. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like I, I said, none of the comedians are funny, but I didn't mean none of them. He 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 is. You know, if you were on a desert island, you'd certainly want him there. There's some comedians that's the last person you would want there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, uh, I think me, somebody would love to have me on a desert island until about three or four days in, and then we can get him the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Jackie Martin here. Uh, why didn't I ask Artie Lang, you know? <laughs> hey, you know, Dave, uh, there's one story I haven't told you. Oh, he's just great. I just love it. <laughs> Uh, but uh, speaking of comedians, the the new comedian on the scene is none other than Caitlyn Jenner. Who? Uh, Caitlyn Jenner, you know the uh, the transsexual. Tell me he's not. She's not. Whatever the fuck he hears. She, she that thing is trying to do comedy. Uh, that sexy sexy lady. Uh, is now uh, she's a comedy roaster and she's roasting Alec Baldwin. Adam, one of the funniest stories in my entire book. The joke man, Bradster. One of the funniest stories in this book is about Bruce Jenner. That was Caitlyn Jenner uh, many moons ago, and it's so funny. I'm not going to give it away, but 
you know, I wrote notes for Howard all the time. And uh, and some people caught on and some people didn't. And you got to read the story because uh, it's it's not it's not totally flattering to Bruce Jenner or Caitlyn Jenner. She he's doing comedy. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, would you like to hear my Caitlyn Jenner joke that I wrote? <laughs> I would love to hear it. Say, uh, uh, Caitlyn Jenner wants to play uh, a superhero in one of the films. Well, why not make her uh, the new Wolverine? Because she's already one of those X Men. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's a good joke. That's, that's a good joke. <laughs> you know, I heard a guy say the other day, it's funny because uh, Bruce Jenner was on the. Remember Wheaties, the cereal Wheaties? Yeah. And, uh, Bruce Jenner was on the box and now he has one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's uh, a very that's a very funny guy from Boston. That's his joke. A really funny guy. God, now I got to think of his name and I don't know his name, but he's a really good guy. <laughs> it's a shame that uh, uh they say uh Caitlyn Jenner's ex-wife was such a cunt that he developed one. <laughs> I did. It was, she was such a cunt that he caught it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's so funny because Bruce Jenner and Chris Jenner were married and had all, all these kids, and they lived across the street or down the street from Stuttering John and his wife and his kids. And they used to party all the time together. And the, 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 uh, the Jenner Kardashian house was so nuts that John's ex-wife said, you know, they were still married. She said, you know, this is crazy here. You guys should have your own TV show. It's actually Susanna Melendez's idea for them to do a reality show. And I don't think they, of course, they never gave her a nickel, you know. Uh, uh, you know, I hope they did. Maybe they did. But as far as I know, they didn't. But, you know, I, I've i never watched any of that. I, I don't understand any of that garbage. You know, they, they dress those girls up and put on makeup and do everything they can. And, and, you know, it's like, I don't know if you knew Otto and George, but Otto and George was like, you ever see a big, fat broad with bright blonde hair and red lipstick? He's, you know, it's just like putting whipped cream on dog shit. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you ever hear Otto and George's impression of Jerry Seinfeld? I, me and Otto were such asshole buddies for so long because starting in 1979, we were the two guys that were too dirty. You know, there were people that really loved us, but there were a lot of bookers avoided us like the plague. You know, they just would not <laughs> use us, you know. So we had a bond and we were in a movie together. You probably never heard of this movie called Comedy's Dirtiest Dozen. And it's me and Otto, Tim Allen, Chris Rock, Bill Hicks, um, it, it was like 12 really dirty, really funny, funny people. It's called Comedy's Dirtiest Dozen. It came out in like 1990, but it got reissued on DVD. And I'm pretty sure it's, <clears throat> I don't know if it's on Netflix or Amazon, but you know, if you, if you Google Comedy's Dirtiest Dozen and you know, it's dated, but it's, it's fucking funny. You know, it was killer, you know, but, uh, I, I don't remember him specifically with Seinfeld, but he was. He he, uh, he was just off the charts funny, just crazy, you know. Well, it's another uh, guy that fucking drugs got a hold of him, man, and never let go, you know. Well, for, for those that haven't heard the impression, it goes, he goes, I thought I'd do some uh, uh, observational humor, uh, like Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, Did you ever notice when you kick your girlfriend in the cunt, she can't stop calling the cops? <laughs> <laughs> You know, way back when he he cut the hair on his dummy's head and made it a flap, and underneath he painted it all red. And he used to say, "Here's my impression of the Kennedy assassination." He go <laughs> pow, and the dummy would throw his head back, and the head the hair would flap back, and the top of his head was all red. It was. It was, it was so off the charts that, I mean, people literally couldn't believe it. And he went to all that trouble for that one horrible, nasty, my impression of the Kennedy assassination. Pow! Pow! Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, what a, what a delightfully funny, you know, I gave him a joke for the, 
for the comedy's dirtiest dozen that's in there. And I was always so proud because well, I didn't give him a joke. I gave him a tagline because he said, yeah, this girl I was with last night, she was so fat. She spread her legs and a fucking Greyhound bus came driving out. And I said to him, you should add to that. Yeah. And the, and the bus driver had a toothpick. I had a <laughs> the bus driver had a clothespin on his nose. <laughs> It's worth downloading the movie just to, just to hear him say that. A but fucking it, Greyhound bus came out of a cunt. The driver <laughs> had a clothespin on his nose. Oh, who could make that up? But, uh, commercial, uh, commercial. The Joke Man, Bow to Stern, JackieTheJokeMan.com. Go on Amazon, buy the books. The least you can do. We're sitting there trying to make you funny or make you laugh or make you go to the bathroom, whatever we're doing. Well, I'm fun. Adam, I appreciate you talking to me. How old are you? You gotta be you're not even thirty, right? I'm thirty-four. I'm seventy-one. How old what am I doing? I should be in a rocking chair, relaxing and, and you know telling fifty one year olds that they're too old to do this. You know? <laughs> well, uh speaking of which, I gotta ask you about this next guy. Uh one of my favorite comics ever is Andrew Dice Clay. And uh, during your run on the Hard Stern show, he had they had a bit of a big fallout. So talk to me about uh, Dice's appearances on the Stern show and their on-air fallout. It you know it was so funny, and it you know it's it's all horseshit. You know, um, I knew him from four years before I even heard of the Howard Stern show. He was around forever. He was way back in the day. I mean. The whole big riff was that, was that uh, Otto and George, people said that Dice lifted uh, the dummy's persona, which wasn't really true, you know, but that was back in the days of Pips. And so I knew Dice forever and ever. <clears throat> in fact, he says that a show that we were in together was the show that launched him. It was a show called Red Fox's Dirty, Dirty Jokes that was taped in a club in Los Angeles uh, that they, they pretended it was Red Fox's uh, comedy club, which it wasn't. It was some other club. And it was me and Dice Clay and, you know, this girl that used to be uh, Lenny Bruce's girlfriend and Ronaldo Ray. And you know who else was in that show? Bob Schimmel. Do you remember Robert Schimmel? Oh, yeah. Look him up. He was a dirty, dirty bird. He was great. He, I think he died of cancer, whatever he died of. He, <clears throat> he was a spectacular guy. And so I knew Dice forever. And then Dice started coming on the show. And it's really funny because... He had been on the show a couple times or something. And at some point, uh, somebody said, oh, yeah, Dice is coming on the air or something like that. And I said, some, you know, you know me, I'm fooling around, breaking balls. I said some wise guy crack about him. And a few days later or a week later, Howard called Dice and he went nuts on me and out of a clear blue sky. And I had no idea. I guess he had heard what I said and decided he was going to. And so he attacked the hell out of me. The next time he called, I was ready, and I made mincemeat out of him. And Gary, on Best of Stern, replayed and replayed and replayed the call where Dice fucked with me so bad. And one day I said, Gary, everybody says you keep playing Dice fucking with me, but you never play the one where I, where I got <laughs> over on him. And Gary said, it's not funny when you win. <laughs> Yeah, but then Howard and Dice, you know, they all of a sudden, you know, like it was like Howard's feuds with Sam Kinison. You know, it made good radio. You know, they, 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 it, it's, it was mostly bullshit. You know, the truth was they had nothing in common whatsoever. The only reason they would ever have been friends or bonded at all was uh, ka-ching, you know, mm. help each other make money. You know, the God, you know, the last thing in the world they'd ever do is sit there and, and hang out. You know, same with same with Sam, you know. Hanging out, sharing some fucking hoes. Oh! Oh, God. They, they, you know, he, he was funny. He was fun. But meanwhile, those nursery rhymes he used to do, I used to do those in 1955. You know, those little kids' nursery rhymes. But taking it to the stage in that persona was classic. You know, it was just him being Dirty Johnny. That's all it was, you know. What's in the bowl, bitch? You know, it's funny <laughs> shit. Funny shit. Uh, but I've got to ask you, uh, the last time we spoke, you told me a Rodney Dangerfield story about him farting in an elevator. 
Oh. And it was one of the funniest fucking stories I've that ever story heard. That story is not in this book. It will be in the sequel. All right, I'll make you a deal. If you email me, anybody emails me and said, I heard you on Adam's podcast, I will email you the story he's talking about. You want me to tell you the story? No, I was wondering if you could tell us, uh, do you have any other Rodney Dangerfield stories? One of the funniest <laughs> things he ever said, when I, w- I was, I only traveled with him for two weeks. And people call up and people tweet and say, you're so full of crap, man. You make out like you were big pals with Rodney Dangerfield. You were only with him two weeks. I never said I was. But just so much happened in those two weeks. We had so much fun. And there's so many stories that came out of it. It's unbelievable. But we went to Fort Lauderdale at Easter time in 1980. Now, I don't know if you know anything about the United States. <clears throat> Fort Lauderdale in South Florida, that's where all the kids used to go spring break. And I mean, it was <clears throat> wall to wall, guys, girls, drinking, fucking, sucking. It was insane. And it, it wasn't even uh, it wasn't even rampant with pot because people were too busy getting drunk and getting laid. You know, it was not that kind of laid back. Oh, man. It was more like, yeah, yeah, whoo, whoo, whoo. And uh, so we're in Fort Lauderdale in 1980 at Easter time. And it is packed with luscious girls in bikinis. And me and Rodney are walking. This isn't even a funny story, but it, but it is. We're walking down the sidewalk on the edge of the beach. And everywhere you looked, there were girls in bikinis. And it, it was just, it was not fair to your cock. It really wasn't. <clears throat> and we're looking, and out of a clear blue sky, Rodney turned to me and says, don't you wish you could just fuck anybody you want? <laughs> <laughs> I almost felt that. I was like, I was like, yeah, but you, you don't really have to say that out loud. Dude. <laughs> oh, we had such a hoot. We had such a hoot. Yeah, but great. but I, I want to uh, uh, thank you so much for your time, Jackie. You, you're just an unbelievably naturally funny guy. But can I can I ask one favor from you? I will do any. I will. I will not show you my cock. Plus, there's not enough room on the screen anyway. <laughs> uh, I, I work for this other sports show uh, that has this ex wrestler on it called. Well, it's, he's still whatever the fuck. Uh, this guy's name is Conan. Say it again. Conan. Conan, like Conan the Barbarian? Yeah. And uh, he refuses to do my podcast. So anytime I get a guest on, I uh, ask if they could record a message sort of threatening him into doing this. Uh, Would you mind? Sure. Hey, Conan, I totally understand you're not doing Adam's show. I wouldn't either if I was you because I... I heard your cock is so small that your sperm comes out single file. <laughs> Conan, you're a prick. Do Adam's podcast. Who are you? I never heard of you. Do the fucking podcast. Jesus Christ. You know you're going to be dead soon, especially if you're a wrestler. You're so, probably so full of steroids. Every time you burp, you cure somebody, you asshole. Do his podcast. But don't do it, but email me. All right, I'm going to do a final commercial. This is my book, <laughs> The Joke Man, Bow to Stern. I promise you, you will love it. Go to uh, Amazon, JackieTheJokeMan.com. Type that into your into your computer, and the Amazon page will come up. You can buy the book in hardcover. You can buy it in Kindle. You can buy it in audiobook, JackieTheJokeMan.com. I tweet jokes every day at Jackie Martling, 4.20 p.m. International Marijuana Time, wherever the fuck time it is, wherever you guys are. Uh, my website is jokeland.com. It's a fun place to go. There's not that much on there, but it's fun. If you're ever in the United States, you can find out where I'm working. Send me an email, and I will be your friend. Jokeland at AOL.com. And I'll send you a bunch of Rodney stories you've never heard, and you will piss your pants. They're not in the book. Very special. Jackie Mason stories, Stern stories that didn't make it in the book. I have a second book, but nobody seems interested. Adam, I love talking to you. Uh, I hope to come to Ireland one day and we will have fun, I promise you. Definitely. And- oh, one last thing. Hey, Conan, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Jackie, thanks so much for your time. My pleasure, my pleasure. Okay.
Have a good one. Th- this will be out uh, maybe Tuesday. Let me know. Let me know where I can hear it, see it, enjoy it. And let me know if you get any feedback on this. I'd love to know if your listeners are enjoying it. Uh, no problem. All right, I'll speak to you later, Jackie. Arrivederci. <laughs> see you.